Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's you we look to, Lord. It's you we run to, Jesus. Through every struggle, through every trial, Lord. Just through today, Lord. Just to be with you, to know you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to know you. Thank you, Jesus. When I enter the gates of, the, of that beautiful city of heaven, I know I'm not going to see a stranger there. Right. I'm going to see my dad. I'm going to see my heavenly father who's walked with me and been with me every step of the way. Every step of the way. Even when I didn't know him, just as a little girl, I got filled with the Holy Ghost when I was 12 years old. And I've never wanted to go back. Oh, I've, I've, I've had my moments where I've looked back. But I didn't really want to be there. I knew where home was. I knew where I belonged. I belong with, I belong with the Lord. And so do you. So does the world. They don't know it. But there's a place for them. There's a place for everyone. I love that. All right, we're going to talk about abiding in Christ. Abiding in Christ. I want to stay there. I like having a place. Knowing that that's where I belong. But abiding is being faithful. God is faithful and wants us to abide faithful too. We have been bonded and betrothed to the Lord in the Spirit by the Holy Ghost in filling. Let's turn to Hosea chapter 2, verses 19 and 20. Can you find it? Hosea chapter 2, verses 19 and 20. And I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness, and in judgment, and in loving kindness, and in mercies. And I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know the Lord. Yeah, for him it's forever. When he filled with you with the Holy Ghost, it was forever. It wasn't okay until you disappoint me. Or until I, I see you just can't learn what I'm teaching you after the first couple of times. No, he's faithful. he's faithful. God is slow to anger. He knows it. He knows it might take a while to learn some of those lessons. So don't feel bad. Who's ever fallen in sin? You, you messed up somehow. You did something you shouldn't have did. God has a plan for that. He does. God is faithful. And the relationship God designed even exists because we're to be like Jesus in power and in suffering. That seems unlikely, doesn't it? But didn't we just get done teaching about that? Having joy even in suffering? But yeah, what God gives is so good that even when things are going wrong, it's still worth it. Philippians 3.10 Let's turn there. Philippians 3.10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Oh, we like that one. Yeah. What was dead brought to life. That's exciting. Oh, but it goes on. And the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. But see, you can't have a resurrection until there's a death. Yeah, I want to die out to sin. For me to abide in Christ, I need to die out to sin. I need to die out to me so that he can resurrect in me his power, his spirit, his truth in me. But we can make it. Everyone say, I can make it. I can make it. Say it like you mean it. I can make it. We can make it because God abides faithful. We have his promise. Let's turn to John 15, 7. John 15, 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. That's exciting. I've never asked for a Maserati, but then I don't really need one. So I, I don't know why God would need to give me one for me to be able to not be a liar. Okay, God, I mean, that sounds like I'm trying to bribe God or bargain with him. I won't lie anymore if you give me a million dollars. That's not what God's talking about there. First John, or uh, just John 15, verse 7. But if I say today, God, I need your help. I don't want to be a sinner. I don't want. I don't want to fall into sin. I don't want to be a liar today. Strengthen me, God. 
Help me to understand what it is I need to be doing. Why do we need to lie anyway? If you're not doing anything wrong, what do you need to hide? So don't, usually lies come because we're hiding what we did wrong. Or if we're like jealous of somebody and we're trying to hide what they're doing. That's why people lie about other people. It's the truth. But it's true. Think about why people lie. They either hiding the wrong they did or they're hiding the good somebody else's did. Right? Yeah. Typically, because they want somebody to think bad of somebody else. Yeah. True. True or false? Who's experienced that? Somebody ever lie about you when you weren't doing wrong, but somebody said you did. They blamed you or something. But I don't have to live that life. I can walk free of it. I like scripture in Psalms where it says, Mark the perfect man. For the end of that man is peace. You notice, you start getting all the sin and all the junk out of your life. All the drama leaves. And then I get peace. I get all the goodness of God. Mercy and goodness follow me. I start living a merciful life. I start living a good life. I start taking joy in what God takes joy in. Sometimes I don't have joy in myself because I'm taking joy in the wrong things. Okay? So when God's talking about abide in me, you can't abide in God and be a liar. It, it doesn't work that way. No wonder some people don't get their prayers prayed. No wonder they ask amiss, as the scripture talks about. They don't get their prayers answered. Because God's going, you don't need that junk. I'm not going to give it to you. Sometimes I've been the whiny kid at the when my mom's paying for groceries. Can I have a 49 cent toy? And then I'd lower it a little bit. No, 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 not this. You don't need that. Can I have a 29 cent toy? And I'd kind of get this whiny. Mom didn't like that. She put an end to that. She didn't like whiny kids. So if I ask politely, I might get it. She knew my attitude was wrong. But today that we're going to talk, our first section is abiding in the church. How can you abide in Jesus Christ when you don't go to church? Okay. Uh, God wants us to abide in the church. The church is our spiritual mother. And of course, we need a relationship with our mother. The world is messed up because they think the earth is their mother. Or that they think they have no mother at all in the church. But we've been designed to have that relationship. Once upon a time, I wanted God. I, I didn't want the church. It doesn't work that way. We must learn to abide faithful to the system God has set to train and raise up his people. It takes a mom. Sorry, some people think it takes a village. It takes a mother and a father. Okay? God is the father. The church is the mother. The mother teaches the children to love and honor and respect the law and love of their father. That's what a mother does. Okay? I had to learn that. I had to learn that there's other kids in the church who may or may not be behaving, but I'm not to worry about them. They don't do right. I'm to forgive them. I'm not there to correct them. That's, that's mom's job. That's dad's job. That's the church and God's job. Okay? And the mother reaffirms the law and the love of the father. And they work together. It even works in marriage, my husband and I. That's why we work together. Our kids can tell you we're pretty hard to divide. They can't get in the middle and kind of play us off each other. We stick really tight. But I reaffirm the love and the law of my husband for our family. And God leads our family, leads my husband. And I follow him. And it, it works that way in the church or it's supposed to, this church does it. I can't speak for every other church, but I can speak for this one. We're going to reaffirm God's love and his word. But I thought, you know, just because there were problems in the church and I could look around and see people struggling in the church and some of their struggles came my way because I, I didn't invite it, but there it was. But I learned that God will take care of those things. I'm to do what's right and not worry about them, okay? But we got to be faithful. But the system is in the church, so we need to be faithful and abide there. Listen to this. God gets very, very clear. Listen to this. In Leviticus 8, 33 through 36. And you shall not go out of the door of the tabernacle of the congregation in seven days until the days of your consecration be at an end. 
For seven days shall he consecrate you, as he hath done this day, so the Lord hath commanded to do, to make an atonement for you. Therefore shall ye abide at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, day and night, seven days, and keep the charge of the Lord, that ye die not. For so I am commanded. So Aaron and his son did all the things which the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. Okay, this is talking about the priests ministering. But remember, we are now kings and priests unto God. In the New Testament, will of God, we are kings and priests, and we are also the temple of God. We need to be faithful in the temple of God, just as the priests were commanded by God. But just as there was death outside of the house of God for Aaron and his sons, because they were in a time of consecration, and we have entered into that consecration through grace by being born of the Spirit and truth. Okay, so we've entered in. All right. You don't just treat God like my mother-in-law used to say, like an old dirty dish rag. I can show up to church and not show up. It doesn't matter. I'll serve God in front of the pastor. When I go home, I'll just do whatever. No, we've got to be faithful. Faith. They were ministers of the Lord, Aaron and his sons, and God commanded them to abide there during times of service. And there is spiritual death to us who will not be faithful to the house of God. Listen to this in Acts 27, 31. Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in this ship, ye cannot be saved. Years ago, a dear old saint gave me this insight about church as she was one of the last faithful saints at a very small church that had been through a few pastors and during that time, many of the people had left to attend a nearby independent Jesus named church. She told me she felt frustrated true and she couldn't drive so she didn't leave for that other church but thought about quitting the church as a, uh, as a church had about died in that small logging town of Morton. God dealt with her so strongly using that verse in, in Acts 27 that she stayed faithful. Now that's abiding. It was her and one other family. But God told her, unless you stay with the ship, you'll be lost. Okay? Listen to this in Psalms 15, 1-5. I love to share the word of God. That's why I guess I always say, listen, look at this. Psalms 15, 1-5. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? The psalmist is asking a question. Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? I know I want to. And then he, he gives a list of characteristics of things that must be done. He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contemned. But he that honoreth them that fear the Lord, he that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not, he that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent, he that doeth these things shall never be moved. Oh, I like that. I like warranties that say, if something gets messed up, I can take it back to the one who, who designed it, who made it, who knows how to fix it, and they will fix it. I like that. I can go back to God any time. As long as I'm utilizing what he's given me the way I'm supposed to, yeah, there's definite instruction. He'll fix it. He's promised me. My word's good. Yes, my warranty. It has no expiration date. I like it. I like it a lot. I love it. But God has given us a recipe for success. To abide in the church and it's completely doable. We can succeed. Everyone say, I can succeed. I can succeed. Yes, we can abide by following God. Let's turn to Psalm 61 verse 4. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Selah. What's he talking about? Don't you know birds, when they feel like they're little ones, there's danger nearby, gonna come at their children. They get, for everyone from a chicken to an eagle, you look at, start looking at birds, different kinds of birds. They get their babies right under their wings. Even doesn't a mother, when she's sitting on her nest, she's covering those eggs. So anybody wants to come to her children, they're gonna have to go through her. 
And that's how the church, that's how the pastor, I've watched him when some have come here that God has told my husband they are the uh, scent of the devil. They're a wolf. They're messengers of Satan. And I've watched him begin to preach and preach and preach and preach. And either they hit this altar or they hit the door. Either they convert and become one of the sheep or that wolf runs away. True, true story. But God wants us to abide in the church under the protection of his wings. And I thank God for our pastor who is an under shepherd who's faithful and he there's protection here that false doctrine how it creeps in unawares we've got a pastor who watches watches for me watches for you i may be the pastor's wife but i need a pastor watching for me right. it's the truth i don't see spiritually like my pastor does he can see like miles off what i can only see to the back door it's the truth. That's a God-given ability. I've seen it happen in my husband's life, just like that. All right, let's talk about abiding in the night season. There's a time when we don't see what God is doing in our lives. We are to faithfully bless God day when we know what's going on and night when we don't. Psalms 16, verses 7 through 8. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. Thank God for that. My reigns also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. God's people knew this concept in Bible days. They understood and the faithful didn't worry about it. They just kept their minds on God and his word regardless. Yes. Do you know what the reins are in this passage? They are reins like you see on a horse who does not have full control. But whoever is holding the reins is the one who decides what direction the horse will go. We don't have to see everything going on, and we certainly don't. It's not blind faith, though. Because remember, we serve the God who said, I will guide you with my eye. But God's faithful. He's guiding us. He sees what's going on. And he'll take care of us. He'll take care of you. He's there. I pray that all the time. Okay, God, what you see in this situation, open the door and shut the door. Because you know what's going to happen. Do I need to go that direction? Do I need to be around that person? Manifest the truth about them, what they are. There's been people that I thought were good as gold, and they weren't. And then there were some people that I thought were messed up. Truth is, they were the ones that God was wanting me to connect with. It's the truth. His word forever settled in heaven will give us direction. Though we don't know where our path is leading, God does. God knows. We must learn not to fight or resist the Lord. Let him have full control of the reins of your life. Yes. All right, let's turn to Joshua 1.8. Listen to what he told Joshua. That's what God told him. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then yeah. shalt thou have good success. Yeah. You want everything to go right in your life? Yeah. So don't let the word of God slip out of your hands. In fact, read about the Proverbs where it's talking about the voice of wisdom. And wisdom being an ornament. We've taught about the ornament of wisdom, haven't we, before? And bind it around your neck. It means wherever you go, something's tied around your neck. Something that wherever you're going, it's going with you. Keep the word of God, God close. Those who would not keep their focus on God, keeping the main thing, the main thing, then they would end up in Babylonian captivity or some other trouble. Go back and read Old Testament. Whenever God's people would kind of wander away and they kind of wanted to be like the other nations and, and hang out with the cool kids, so to speak, of the world. I ended up messed up like them. But whenever they said, God, I'm going to serve you. God, we're going to put you first. Go, go read about kings and Sam and First and Second Samuel, First and Second Chronicle, First and Second Kings. There would be a king who would serve God, and God would bless him. And then there would be a king rise up after that one died, and he would forget God. Always a mess happened. Always. But God promises structure. And being established if people focus on God, whether it's day or night, because he knows our way. God knows where we are and what is happening, why, and what to do about it. 
We're to be like the tree planted, not the chaff driven by the wind. Let's turn to Psalms 1, verses 1 through 3, and then we'll also read verse 6. So the first psalm. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. I don't, I'm careful who I listen to. Okay. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. I don't act like somebody who's sinning. Okay. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. I'm not going to sit back and judge anybody else either. Okay. Verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And verse 3. Here's the promise. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. In verse 6, For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. I can be fruitful. I can be prosperous. I'm going to have enough. God's going to make me strong. He's going to establish me. I'm going to have roots. I'm not going to be all over the place, not knowing... You know, whether today or tomorrow, everything's going to be messed up. No, I know whatever's going on. God's going to take care of it. He's going to take care of me. We are to abide both day and night, no matter what happens, praising God. Psalms 134.1. Let's turn there. 134.1 in the book of Psalms. Behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which stand by night in the house of the Lord. At night? Yeah, at night. When most people are home locking their doors or they're out doing mischief. No, there's a people saying, I'm going to be faithful to my God day or night. Praise God for what you see and what you don't, for what you understand and for what you don't. Trusting him all the way. <coughs> Excuse me. Psalms 139.12. I love this verse. This one has given a lot of comfort to me over the years. 139.12 Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. He's the psalmist is referring to God. God's not afraid of the dark. He's there. There's nothing in the dark that God can't protect you from. He can take care of you through what you see, through unseen circumstances that you don't know how it's going to work out. But you can trust him. Trust God and abide faithful in him because he's the same in light or darkness. All right, let's talk about abiding in the work of the Lord. It's the, I think this is the last part. Yep. Last part. We must abide faithful in the work of God no matter the process, the time frame, environment, or how long it takes. Also, we must stay at our post no matter how small and humble it is. Or if it doesn't put our name in the paper or online. We might not get the notice of the powers that be, but God is, but if God has given us something to do, we need to abide in it until it's done, or God gives us something else to do. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians 7, uh, 20, and also verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 20 and 24. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called therein abide with God. Yeah. Stay at your post. Stay faithful. Do the job. Do the job. Okay. I'm not, I can't make Seattle be saved. But I can stand here and tell them the way. I can show them who God is. What they choose is on them. I, I'm not responsible to build a big church here. And to have a flashing sign and an espresso stand in the vestibule. I'm sorry, that's not it. I don't. If if I can give somebody a cup of coffee and that will make them want to stay around long enough to hear that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, the one true God, the everlasting Father, and that they need to repent of their sins, be baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost for the remission of their sins. Sure, I'll give somebody some coffee. I've served a lot of food in this room. I've done it, and I'll do it again. But I wasn't called just to serve food. There's a spiritual food. We get approached uh, by those in need, and I'm not opposed to helping those in need. But we're helping the spiritual homeless here. There's people wandering the street who got more money than I got, but they spiritually, they have no home. They're wandering, spending their money on this and that, spending their time on this and that. 
and they don't even know their own father and mother. It's the church. It's the God Almighty. This is our work here. All right, let's, let's read 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast and movable. Everyone say, I'm not moving. I'm not moving. That's it. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Oh, we talked about how every man at his best state is altogether vain, but I'll tell you what is it when you work for God. Everything you do for God, it's not empty. It has substance. You want to build something that's going to make a name for yourself? When God looks at you and I, when we, we come before him face to face, He's going to remember even a cup of water given in his name. He's going to remember the cards that this church has passed out and the times we've stood on the street giving food to people in need. He's going to remember just the small kindnesses that said, come, follow me. Come unto me. Because there was the Lord. We can be the hand of the Lord. That's really what the church is there, is reaching for people. So they can come home. They can have a home. They can have what you've received. The peace of God. Eternal life. A clean heart. Clean spirit. Well, let's go on. 1 Corinthians 4, 1 and 2. Let's read it. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Oh, I like that. Anybody like mysteries? The mysteries of God. We're stewards of that. We're going to be faithful. King David wrote this, said, I have not withheld thy truth and loving kindness from the congregation. There's the ministries. Uh, that's me. uh, 1 Corinthians 4, verses 1 through 2. All right. We like it. We're ministers of Christ, stewards of the mysteries of God. Okay, but here's the work. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Oh, it's great walk in and feel like you're a part these guys are get to be in front of people and they get to tell people about life but you yourself got to be faithful I got to be faithful before I can step up here in front of the pulpit I got to be faithful we must be faithful in the work of God there's an old song we used to sing that the lyrics go like this put your life into the master's hand put your life into the master's plan for he has a work for you that nobody else can do. Put your life into the master's hand. God wants to use our lives for his glory and we can be faithful. Amen. You know what? I do have one last part. We're going to save that for next week. All right? But let's be faithful. Because you know what? God abides faithful. He loves you. He loves me. Try him out today. What do you need? Do you need food today? Are you lonely? Do you need a new friend? Talk to the Lord. Tell him, I need some good friends my age. I need somebody who, who's spiritual, who can help me, who can bless me. Because of every friend you got, you end up sinning when you're with them. Ask God for a new friend. Say, God, I want to be faithful. Help me understand this. Let me be faithful the way you're faithful to me. I love you all, church. Lord bless you all. And I want you to just go on being faithful. Did everybody read 2 Samuel chapter 2 or 22 last week? If you didn't, make note and read it. It's God's response when we pray. It's meaty. Just sit and feed on it. Write out your favorite five scriptures that you find out of it this week. Chapter 22 of 2 Samuel. Lord bless you all as the pastor is coming.